Well, I think he is properly feeding and I'm surprised just by how white <laughs> his canines are. <laughs> now it, it is quite nice, I think the weather is going to start warming up pretty soon which is very good for all of us because then Tandy and I are going to look like we're not that cold anymore and Tamba, well, I think he's just got the best spot in the house. Likely he can just stop feeding, perhaps even drop the kill and carry on sleeping in that spot without having to move all that much. I am surprised that there is still so much meat left in that kill. It doesn't, when we first arrived, it didn't seem like there was too much, but I think he's threading carefully now in between all the bones. Oh, that's a bit um, too much, so if you. you ooh, yeah. You, you do look like a normal house cat. Like I said, if this is a bit too much and you find it that is a bit sensitive to, to watch, please do look away. Um, it is the raw power of nature, and this is how this youngster is going to manage to get into adulthood just by feeding on everything that m mom manages to catch for it. Though I must say that is a bit of a funny view. Oscar, you're wondering if it's only leopards out of the cat family that only climb trees. Well, no, not necessarily. Leopards are well known in this area for climbing trees and especially for putting their kills up at trees just to avoid competition from other predators like hyenas. But also I have seen lions on top of trees on plenty of occasions. They, however, are a bit too heavy and not as agile, but they can go up in trees. And then we've got caracals and wildcats, which are smaller cats that also have a semi-arboreal lifestyle. So they always go up. So lots of cats can go up and down, just some of them choose to do it more often than not and some that are heavier like the lions, well they can but it's not ideal for them. But I think in places like in the Masai Mara for example you would see lions up the trees a bit more often just to try and escape from the annoying tsetse flies. Whereas here our leopards are just so used to you trees being safety to put up our kills, to get away from predators that they do it more often than some of the other ones. <laughs> Sean, you're wondering if leopards can digest bone. They can, they, they will digest pretty much everything that they try to eat, but they will not eat as many or as much bone as a hyena, for example. Their jaws and their teeth tru structure is not as specialized as the one for hyenas, but they still need to have some sort of uh, bone added to their diet to be able to grow. If you can imagine, calcium is the most important thing to strengthen the bones and grow up. So if they don't eat bone, then they're not going to be able to grow as much as they should. And I think it's the lack of calcium is definitely one of the biggest concerns when you when you're when you have captive leopards or captive uh, animals in general because a lot of the times the meat just has an overload of phosphorus but you also need to add some calcium because otherwise your animal won't look fat but his bone density is going to be so low that it's not it's eventually going to be very weakened because its bones are not going to be able to hold it together well not hold it together but hold it up Shame girl, you are very alert. I wonder if perhaps that hyena is not lurking somewhere in the area. Crickets, you're wondering if leopards have more fun during the day than during the night. Well, that depends. They are believed to be not solely nocturnal creatures or diurnal creatures. A lot of people call them crepuscular animals so that they'll start moving in low light conditions so that it is early morning or late afternoon when the sun is either coming up or down. But I find that I've seen or in my experience at least with the leopards in the savvy sand they can have as much fun during the night as during the day. I think as a matter of fact I've seen them more active during the day than during the night but we then follow them around in the morning and we just look at their tracks and we know that they've been walking for quite a while. So I think it's a mix of things. Oh Tandy did you see the... I think maybe she's... oh no I got excited she looked up and then I thought that maybe she was looking at the at the Impala, but no, the Queen's just decided to move around. Well, and by Queen, I mean the Queen of this termite mount. <laughs> She's looking very pretty. Got that 
typical leopard look when she gazes into the distance. Maybe pondering about life. And funny enough, Tristan and I were talking about it yesterday. There, There is something about all of Karula's offspring, and I find it that it's just on the bottom part of the jaw from the nose down that Shadow, Karula, and Shongile, they, they share almost, I don't know if it's the look or there there's some sort of resemblance that you can see there because we know that they're related, so you're not imagining it. <laughs> you know that th there is a motherly relationship on that side. And funny enough, I don't know, in leopards, I don't think the study has been done, but in civets, they did a study quite about, uh, a while ago about their spots. And now civet is an animal that is also spotted, not strictly in the in the cat family, but somewhat in appearance similar to to the cats or the spotted cats. And it's that related civets have also similar spot patterns. Now, I don't think this has been studied just yet for the leopards, and I would reckon it would be quite hard to determine as they're all different. But who knows, it would be interesting to see if science manages to get us an answer for that one day and see if, besides genetic, if there's a more obvious spotted um, relationship in between all of them. Because we do know that the coat of every individual leopard is different and all of their rosettes, all of their spots are entirely unique to one another. Catherine, you say that you agree that there's a re resemblance between the leopards. Yeah, I can't say that it, it's, you know, that you would be able to say, ah, this part of the leopard, but there's something, a certain air to them that gives it away. And I haven't quite decided what it is, but there is something. I um, must say, Tandy, you also look quite full. Not as full as your son, who's pretty much finished everything and he's happy up there, but you're not looking too bad yourself. And I think she's a lot happier now that the rain stopped and the sun's starting to come out. I'm going to stick around with these two beautiful leopards, find out what they get up to. But while we do that, let's go over to Tristan and find out where...